Welcome back to Ty and That Guy. Very special Ty and That Guy. We're still in the living room. Uh, we're in, Ty is here in the flesh. Very excited about a that. Lot of flesh. <laughs> Notice that shirt. God damn, I love him. I love him so much. Uh, he's driven across country to come and spend some time with his lover, sometimes hugger, sometimes snuggler. Uh, we have been talking about Black Mirror, and uh, this episode we're going to talk about Joan is Awful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, this is one I wanted to talk about, not so much about the episode, but about the, the questions that the episode brings up, um, which I think is a really interesting combination of two things. And this is a classic Black Mirror episode, because Black Mirror is about the ethical and moral questions that come up from, te from technology, human interaction with technology. And this episode is about two technologies that are ubiquitous right now and in the public consciousness and what happens when we marry them together. So everybody's carrying a phone around. The name Black Mirror comes from phones. Um, so it, it, there's this device that you carry on your person which monitors everything you do all day. Then you combine that technology in this episode with the relatively new technology of generative AI which is computer programs that can take a mass of data, use that mass of data to create variations on the data. So you can take every story you've ever written, put it in this thing, then somebody says, write a story about a princess who fights with a goblin. And it goes through all those stories and it finds the commonalities between all those stories that are about princesses, about goblins, about fighting goblins and creates a story out of that sort of refining and indexing of that data. And we also have uh, technology that allows us to do what we call deep fakes, which is where you, you take video of a person and you have a computer modify it just enough that it looks like the person is doing something or saying something that is false, that you've created, uh, but it looks like the real person doing it. It looks like I'm actually saying it. You can, you can hear them delivering dialogue that they never actually delivered. To illustrate this point, I am not me and Ty is not Ty. Yeah. We actually hired somebody to create us to do this podcast um, to show you how convincing it could be. Yeah, so there, right now where I'm sitting, is there's actually just a, a green tennis ball on a stick. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm, I'm being uh, digitally rendered in here. But so now you take those three technologies, you marry them all together, and you wind up with Jonah's Awful, which is... A company has decided to create television shows based on the lives of individuals. They take all the data from their phone and their Facebook and their Twitter and their whatever to compile uh, all the information about what that person is doing all day long. They use a generative AI to write a script that matches that data that they've collected. And then they use deepfake technology to create what appears to be actors and actresses acting out this, this AI-generated script. And the, the way that that shows up in the episode is a person can watch a TV show about themselves where the TV show is happening just hours or even minutes after the things that they've done. So, you know, somebody drives to the store, they buy some milk, they drive home, they turn on the TV. On the TV, there is a TV show about a person who kind of looks like them, getting in a car, driving to the store, buying some milk. They have dialogue with the person that they buy the milk from that's kind of like the dialogue that, that they said in real life, but not quite. So is, is, all, is the show created within a computer? Yeah. Mm. The idea is that there is this quantum computer that has the processing power necessary to generate the scripts, generate the CGI replacement characters, and do it so fast that the TV show is, is just minutes or hours after the real thing that it's copying. In, so, you know, I think Black Mirror uh, in the beginning was talking about how uh, unintended consequences of what technology can have on us as human beings and the corrupting influence of technology. But this season and this episode in particular is also our corrupting influences on technology, our corrupt wants and needs 
and how we will exploit like Locke Henry, like we will exploit the tragedy in somebody's lives and in terrible moments and then turn it into entertainment, which then brings success and money to the people involved in it. And so with this episode, there, there is a slide into, so Joan is awful. It's not the kind, she's not a serial killer, but it's the kind of awful that we see every day where she's like unempathetic when she has to fire this person and she just wants her out of her office to get away. It's the coldness of, of, of where we are in, in, in our relationships with certain people. And, and, uh, and so through having a show about herself, she is seeing her awfulness through this person. Well, is an exaggerated the, version of her awfulness. Yes. Because the show yeah. keeps it up just a little bit. Right. So if she was, she was, if she was on a scale of one to ten, if she was five awful to somebody, the show will make it ten. Awful. But her awfulness is the direction of what yes. the show is going. Yeah. So her awfulness is there, and she has to look and see it. And sometimes you need to exaggerate it to yeah. then be able to see it. Yeah. You know. And yeah. well, and and because her argument is like. I didn't, I'm not that bad. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't say it that way. Yeah, I didn't say it that way. I I didn't use those words. But the, but the thing is, is like, when, like, the things that she said about her boyfriend, uh, she didn't say all those things. She didn't say those things. She She might have been, she might have been nicer in the language choices, but the meaning and the motivation was the same. It was the same. And I always say it's, it is the intention. It's the intention what's the most important thing because you can do something and do the exact same thing with completely different intentions and they have different things. So it's like, what is the intention underneath it? And the reality is, is that she is awful, but it is covered up in how we cover up our awfulness every day. Yeah, and, I would, and I would say it, the character Joan in the, the way she's portrayed in the show, I don't think she's any more awful than most people like i think we're all yeah oh exactly bad. exactly yeah, yeah she, you know and if like somebody particularly bad if somebody did a tv show of you yeah and oh, highlighting your most awful horrible. moments but amplified it up by it two degrees it would be horrifying. <laughs> horrifying you'd be like oh my god so but the other thing but the thing but the thing is 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 what 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 was revealed with this show what this show's commenting on is yes we all have a little bit of awfulness and it was amplified but we are blind to that. Yeah. We, we can see other people's awfulness, but we can't see our, our own awfulness. And it's like that book Sam Harris has on lying. And he's like, watch yourself for two weeks. Because everybody, you know, when you talk about it, uh, the whole book is about lying and the philosophical question of is it okay at any point ever to lie or should you tell us the truth 100% of the time? But within the book, the exercise is watch yourself for two weeks. And everybody like me is like, well, I don't fucking lie. Like, I, I, I don't have anything to lie about. But you watch yourself for two weeks and you're like, Jesus Christ, I lie every fucking day. Yeah. You know, and you see that and you're like, Jesus, I was unaware of how much I was, you know, dishonest I was in certain times. And, and that, that's what I love. I love Black Mirror for these moral questions. This is, to me, in terms of storytelling, is the things that I'm most interested in. Well, there, there is an argument to be made that... <laughs> that- social groups can only exist because we have the capacity to lie. That if everybody was brutally honest at all times, you would never be able to build cultures and societies because the, the, the sort of daily lying that everybody does is lying to, to reinforce uh, connection and social connection and that sort of thing. Like when your friend goes, oh, do you like my, my new car? And you hate their car. But you say, oh, yeah, it's cool, man. I'm glad you got it. I, it's really exciting to get a new car. You are you, you're creating a deeper bond with that person. And the cost of that is that you're being a little dishonest with them about your true feelings. But that is what allows society to exist. Well, Sam Harris would argue in the book is that if they said, do you like my car? And you said, I am glad that you have that car and that you, but it's not my personal thing that the bond then gets built be- off of an honest foundation. Yeah, and except, except that try that when somebody says it. I do try they, it. They're going to see right through I that do movie. try it. Oh, you hate my car. I, I do try it. And since I read that book, I've really tried hard to be like, how can I tell the truth in this situation? And like, if your mother calls you and you don't get back to her soon and you realize that you didn't get back because you just forgot... And then you find yourself, sorry, I was this and that, da, da, da. And then you sit and say, mom, listen, 
I'm really sorry. I forgot to call you back and I need to work on that because you're so important to me and everything. That immediately puts you in a different sphere because they know you're fucking lying. They know you forgot and you know you forgot. But if you own it up, because what I found is that when you start polishing over these faults, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and you just cover and cover and cover. Whereas when you look at them realistically and say, I didn't call because I fucking forgot. And that means that my priorities are fucked up, you know? And so like, I need to, well, to switch things that's around. That's assuming... That you love your mother. <laughs> that, all those things are true. Like, what is the truth? You you want me to call you every day and it's fucking exhausting. But is it? And I'm tired of calling you every day. You All you do is complain. You all, you're, you're but how, a kind word to say. But, well, you don't say it like that. But how productive is that conversation of like. I think it's not productive because. I think it's 100% productive. You say to her, listen, I, I do want to call you every day. But the way that you complain and everything, it exhausts me. And so, like, and I, I think we need to rethink the way you're looking at the world. And so, like, and like, unless I, I think that is, I think that is very optimistic. Well, I'm, I'm an, I'm an incurable optimist. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting way off topic. Yeah. So going back, well, this, these are the moral questions that this show asks, and this is what I think good storytelling is. Her looking in literally a mirror, a, a real life mirror of her life, amplified by two degrees, yeah. and she's having that realization. Well, it's, it's the funhouse mirror. It's yeah. a mirror that exaggerates you in some way, but it's still a mirror. Right, yeah. right. But the thing is, is like the relationship with the, her boyfriend, she would have continued that relationship where she felt the way that she felt to be polite, to tell the truth. Yeah. And at the end of the day, she hurt his feelings yeah. and it was a rough thing, but she's better off for it. He's better off. And she's better off. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is like him getting out of there yeah. is the best thing for him. Exa- and the best thing for her. Because you don't want to be with somebody... Yeah. It feels that way. About and the best thing for her. But what, what I found really interesting is the, the mirror. You know, when you look at, you know, somebody takes a picture of a mirror and you look in that mirror and you look in that mirror and you look in that mirror and there's so many levels of like, you know, Sam Hyatt and then Kate Blanchett's playing that and then the, the, the funhouse mirror of those things. And then she comes to find out at the end that she is an actress yeah. playing the thing. And the Michael Sarah thing, I, I, I think, I, I don't think that, I really enjoyed that. I, I don't remember you enjoying that as much. I didn't say anything. I don't think I said it. Oh, okay. Because when, when, he, when he comes in, because you're like, that's Michael Sarah. Like, what is he doing? And then he's like, look, I'm not even, I'm Michael Sarah, and I'm in the TV show right now. Right. And I was like, that's really interesting how they played that. The thing that the show is not about, but for me was the, was the more interesting ethical ramification or moral ramification, I guess, whatever it is, is the commodifying of, of your personal life. Because yeah. what they're doing is they're taking everything they know about Joan and they're turning it into a TV show without her permission. They don't pay her. They don't get her permission. The thing says we're allowed to use whatever we want about it. Yeah. That is not that far off from what already happened. Yeah. When you go on Facebook and you, you give every detail of your life, oh, I'm getting married and here's the pictures of where I'm getting married. Here's yeah. The pictures of all my friends. Facebook makes money off of that. Yeah. They commodify you. They commodify your experience. Yeah. And they make money off of it. You don't get any of that Yeah. Money. Yeah. And they don't need your permission to do it because you, when you've signed up to Facebook, you agreed that they're allowed to do that. Yeah. So that what they're doing is an extreme example in the episode. It's an extreme example, but it is exactly what's already happened. Yeah. And so when you watch, you know, the, it's obviously it's exaggerated, but the company stream Barry, which is supposed to be like a Netflix. Yeah. Thing, right. It even has the little. The dome. The dome. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's clear that, and when she says, you can't do this thing, of course we can. You signed the agreement. Yeah. And, and that scares me too, because I'm always, I've never read. Yeah. Like who the, one time I tried and I was, I got through one paragraph and I was like, fuck, I just want to watch the movie, you know, and Joseph, and you might know this more than me, but Joseph brought up, you know, talking about AI and its impact with the writer's guild and everything right now. <laughs> now, Ty, the question I had was somebody was explaining it like, the ramifications of if they just have a shitty first draft by an AI and then hire another writer to fix it and make it good, the like the the structure of who wrote it first versus who comes in after, I I don't like and that's the thing is I don't know the inner workings of that. Is that is that kind of like one of those fears? Uh, I don't think any writer with any self-respect would agree to polish an AI draft of a script. I know I wouldn't. I'd tell them to go fuck themselves if they asked me to polish an AI draft. Would, but, will it be 
ever be possible one day for an AI to write something interesting? Or is that, I, I, well, is that a so, human gene so that can't the be only represented? Comments, the only comment I can make is about what exists now. I don't know what the future holds. Um, and, I, and trying to predict the future is a losing game. Yeah. But the thing, I, so my favorite description of ChatGPT is if you ask ChatGPT to make you a sandwich, ChatGPT goes and gets every sandwich that was ever made before, runs it through a big blender and turns it into mush, takes a sandwich amount of that mush, puts it in a sandwich press and makes it sandwich shaped and gives it to you. Is it a good sandwich? It's not. It contains all the things that sandwiches contain and it is shaped like a sandwich. But it's not a sandwich you would ever make for yourself. Mm. It's not a good sandwich. Mm. That's what ChatGPT does with language. It takes all the language that ever existed, it runs it through a blender, it mashes it into the shape that you asked it to mash it into, and it contains words and sentences and punctuation and all the structure, all of that stuff. But it is just a mush of all the things that came before. The thing that AI can't do yet, and, and again, I'm not predicting the future. Maybe we're around the corner from the, the AI is being able to do this. The thing AI can't do yet is be creative. It mm-hmm. doesn't know how to be creative. It just knows how to take all the things that came before and sort of restructure them into a new thing. And maybe that's the, that is the void that can't be crossed. Maybe that's a distinctly I'm not, I'm human not, not thing, you know? Um, like, maybe that is... The- well, because, like, Streamberry and the, all the AI, they're not, they're not... That AI is not creating stories. It's they're not, feeding off stories it, like real human like, drama. It's slightly altering a thing it already, it, that already came before. Right, right. <laughs> So uh, a little bit about the ending. I think it was the ending was the thing that, uh, because I thought it was interesting that she was actually uh, an actress within it that was unaware she's part of the AI. Um, And you talked about a a little bit of the ending that bumped you a little bit. And it was like the destroy, the the destroying of the supercomputer that was creating all this stuff. Yeah. So, so, okay. So the, the sort of um, 13th floor aspect of the end. Did you ever see that movie 13th floor? No. Okay, but it's, it's, it's a movie not a lot of people saw, but it's about characters realizing that they're living in a computer simulation. Mm-hmm. And so that, that sort of aspect of the end of the story, I didn't feel like it was set up. Mm-hmm. Like they get there and suddenly Mark Lacerra is like, hey, here's a huge aspect of the story you don't know. And I'm yeah. just going to tell you. <laughs> well, I think, I think it was set up by, by the very fact that they casted that the that the actress was casted from Shit's Creek, where you know her. I, my, me and my wife love that show. We think she's fantastic, but she's also someone that you could believe, like Selma Hyatt or uh, um, Kate Blanchett or whatever. Like that's a little bit out of the realm of the TV they're, show. They're too big. Yeah, they're a they're bit too. too big. They're too big, and they have a story within themselves. Whereas the 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 girl from Shit's Creek is an actress that you appreciate that's really funny that's really good but she she's had that one big show so when he says no you're the actress from Shit's Creek and you're like oh because it was like she's the perfect uh the perfect size in her career to fit into that to where it could fly under the radar well, where it was set up by that the piece the piece that is not explained which is the first thing my head went to is why 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 have other layers if you're selling a TV show to people I get why the first layer exists. You're, that's the TV show you're selling. Who are you, all these other layers, who are you selling that to? Mm-hmm. Like, why, why? Those people don't have money. You're not selling them the other show. So, like, having infinite layers, what does that accomplish? Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah. I don't understand what the point of that is. Mm-hmm. So, it just kind of felt like, it felt like, you know what it is? It was an extra weird for no reason. Mm-hmm. So like uh, Daniel, you know, it was right? an extra weird for a twist that didn't really like contribute to the. You didn't you didn't need that yeah. extra weird? Yeah. Right? Like the 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 moment where you're like, okay, here's the computer that's creating this story that's that's stealing my life. That I get, and you want to break that. But when they get there, and he's like, no, we're all computer programs too, and there's like infinite TV shows that are all about like. There's apparently they're making infinite TV shows about infinite false realities and and why? Mm. What is what is the purpose of that? I didn't understand what the point of that was. Because Kate Blanchett is just it's a it, it is another version of the Selma Hyatt story. Yeah. And then is that how it works? Yeah, is that and, what, and, yeah. and Selma Hayek isn't a real person, so she's not paying for Streamberry. So there's no the, the Selma Hayek, I mean the Kate Blanchett version doesn't make money. 
Mm -hmm. Nobody's paying a subscription fee to see it. Mm -hmm. So what is, yeah, it just, I, I, that I found myself a little baffled by. What, yeah. what was the point of that? Yeah. I did like the epilogue though, who the original Joan, yeah. who we learn at the end, kind of rediscovered herself through this process of seeing herself reflected back to her. And she kind of changed her whole and sense. Got to what, start the coffee shop. Started the coffee shop, got into therapy, yep. started being more honest with herself and other people around her. I didn't fully understand the relationship between the actress, uh, the Shits Creek actors, like how they became friends. Well, no, because the idea, not that I did get. So okay. the idea being that when the Shits Creek actors and Salma Hayek go to the, the company headquarters and break the computer, that they are living out a story that has already happened. And in that story, which we don't watch, it's that coffee shop actress and the Shit's Creek actress. The Shit's Creek actress is the Salma Hayek character. So, I see. So the two of them went to Streamberry and broke the computer together. I see. So they became friends. In now that's interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And that's a nice twist on it. But again, that twist exists off the back of the yeah, extra exactly. weirdness that maybe doesn't need to be there. What do you guys think? Let us know. Uh, we will be doing some deep dives. Let us know in the comments. Uh, join our Discord. Um, and, uh, and you guys might have a different take, deeper knowledge or whatever. But let's continue talking about uh, Black Mirror. Thank you guys for hanging out. Like and subscribe, please. Um, say goodbye, Ty. Goodbye, Ty.
guy.